Hello, today's video is all about how the punch card system works in Brother and also Toyota machines. Um, in order to explain this, it's actually quite complicated. Um, so in order to explain this, I've actually taken the card reader unit off this machine. I needed to anyway, because it was all glued up. Um, and I'm going to go through right the way from the beginning to the end and show you how it all works. Now, the first thing to say is don't take card readers, card readers off machines unless you know what you're doing, because they're the very devil to get back on again. However, right, this is the card reader. It holds the card, and I'll show you one thing straight away, which is that there is a little mechanism here that every time I change direction, it moves the card on by one. So every time I go anti-clockwise, it moves it on by one. When I go clockwise... It moves it on by one. You can see the little card reader there moving it on by one. Um, that is the act of changing direction on the carriage. The carriage drives this wheel via a belt, which we'll look at later. And that mechanism is quite cool. Oops, it's down here. Oops, dropped, dropped a bit. I'll pick it up in a minute. Like that. OK. So that's the first thing to look at. Uh, for the next bit, I'm going to put a card in and we'll see what it does. Right, so for this next bit, we have to pay attention to these oop, these little pieces of metal here, which you can see poking up. They are, in fact, U-shaped pins. If I turn it... Oh, it's very difficult to see. But um, if I turn it to the end, you can see it's a U-shaped pin. You've got one end comes up at the front and one end comes up at the back. And if you have a look at the back... Can you see above here, you can see the pins poking out. And when I change direction, you can see that the pins are pulled down, the card advances, and then the pins go back up again. And if there was a hole in the card at the back, the pins can go all the way up through the hole and sit up slightly higher. And if there's not a hole in the card, then the pins sit slightly lower. OK, so that's our first piece of information, which is that we've got some pins that are sitting higher and some pins that are sitting lower, and that's the beginning of our pattern. The next thing you can see is you can see these rakes, which are going for going through and seeing only the pins that are higher up. Now, before I do any of this, um, there's actually some little springs which pull the pins to one side. They're on the main machine, so they're not, they're not in play at the moment, so I'm going to have to manually... shift all the pins to the right okay with them all shifted to the right have a look at these two and these two and see what happens can you see as the feeders come they shift the pins over to the left in this instance okay and then if I reverse direction and again I'm going to have to manually um, wo wobble the pins because the springs aren't in there like that and again if you have a look at the combs coming through any pins that are high up that are going through the holes that are selected it will wobble over to the left okay so that's what's happening here every single time you change direction okay it wobbles any pins where there is a hole in the card over to the left for the next part, I'll take the card out and we will have a look and see what happens. Right then, now, sitting in the pins are 24 of these wobblers, as you might call them. Okay, and they sit through 24 of these holes, like that. And if I turn this around and you see, you can see they sit up against this, the, the, all the pins, there's 24 of them sitting up against those little U-shaped sort of staples. So if I, ha if I wobble it like that, I'm actually, oh, I've got this in the wrong place, hold on. Better. Right. Okay. Now, have a look and see what happens as I rotate. Can you see that as I rotate, the wobbling of the pins pushes the 
feeder pin which my thumb is on fractionally over to one side okay so what you can see is there's 24 of these pins and every time the combs go past which represents 24 stitches um, it's any of the pins which are not poking up through holes in the card it will wobble to one side and any of the pins which are poking up through a hole in the card sorry which aren't poking up through a hole in the card it will miss and not wobble over to one side I hope that makes sense. So what we've got is a comb which is going past lots and lots of these pins and any of them that are selected it is fractionally moving the pin over to one side only for a brief moment and it does that over and over again every 24 stitches as it goes along the bed of the machine. Next part. I told you this was complicated. These little pins here which one end sticks into the card reader, which is now above and behind us, and the other end goes into these holes, 24 of them. Okay, so we know that every time it wobbles it, it moves whatever's behind here. And depending on what hole it is, it moves a different part of whatever's behind here. So let's have a look at what's behind here. What's behind here is eight long strips of metal that run the entire length of the bed. <coughs> Excuse me. So that can affect every single needle on the bed. Okay, so now all we need to do is work out what these eight strips do. By the way, there's only eight strips. So it means that um, when you're moving it along, the first eight wobblers operate the eight strips. The next eight wobblers operate the eight strips again but the carriage has moved on to different needles. And again, for the last eight, operate the eight strips again, but the carriage has moved on to different needles. And let's have a look at what the strips actually do. Now, this is difficult to see, but if you have a look in here, you should be able to see that down there, the strips have got tiny little sort of hooks that reach up. Let me operate it and you should be able to see. So can you see there is... Every eight needles, there is a hook that is moving to the side. Okay, if I move on to the next one, it's a different one. Okay, and as I go through, it moves a different one to the side each time. And don't forget, the only ones that are being moved to the side are the ones that have been selected at any given time. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to work out what it is that these hooks do. Well, it's reasonably simple, actually. What they do is they temporarily grab hold of the needle butts. They're there. If the needle butt is here, the hook sort of moves over and temporarily grabs hold of the needle butt. And what that means is that if you push the needle butt down, it will stay down. If one hasn't moved over and you push the needle butt down, it'll just pop up again. Let me give you a quick demonstration. So let's get it into... Okay, so if I push it over to one side and then push loads of these needles down. Okay, can I don't know if you can see, but this needle butt has stayed very slightly lower. Let's see if I can do that from this, this point of view. Okay, so if I push all the needles down, every eighth one will stay slightly lower. This one is doing it. Okay, and then when I let go, it pops back up again. If I select it, it goes down. If I let go, it pops back up again. Which may seem, so what? But the carriage then does some magic. Now, in order to show you the magic that the carriage does, I'm going to have to put this machine back together again, um, and therefore I will come back in a bit once this is all working. Right, so I'm about halfway through the reinstallation process, but this gives us quite a nice view. If you look, these little sort of U-shaped pieces of wire are the feelers that go up into the punch card. We're looking at the bottom of the punch card reader now. These black rods are the ones that I demonstrated that would um, jiggle these strips. And if, because there's not a punch card in, the, in, in there in the minute, it'll select all of them. So if I turn, can you see every single one of these is being jiggled? Okay. And every single one of these is moving backwards and forwards in turn 
to grab the needles. Just thought I'd show you that before I finish completely reassembling the machine. Okay, so we've reached the point where we've got punch cards which um, select specific needles that will be held down, held down if they're pushed down, so they'll latch down if they're pushed down as the carriage passes by. So the next thing to say is that the carriage is powering this whole thing through a belt. You can see the belt moving at the back. Okay. And then the final thing to say is why does pushing them down select them? And that comes in uh, this part here. Okay. So I don't know if you can see, but it's a sort of um, hump in the road. So as the needle moves along here, it gets pushed down by this hump. Okay. And if it just pops straight back up again, then what happens is it hits this gate and gets pushed backwards. But this gate isn't very high, so if it holds back a bit, if it's, if it's pushed down and stays down, then it skips over this gate and it hits this one instead and gets pushed back. And the overall effect is that you can, in fact, select needles. Now, it has to be said, this machine, I'm afraid, is is going to be dismantled um, and used for spares because um, the uh, on uh, freeing up the punch card, I noticed it's completely worn out. So it actually doesn't reliably select needles anymore, but it does select some of them. Let's have a look and see. There you go. And row by row, needles are selected and you can knit patterns without having to do anything else. Look, there is a needle which has failed to be selected. Um, by the way, if anybody wants to rescue this machine, it is complete. It works beautifully as a plain machine. It's just not that reliable at patterning. Um, if anybody wants one of such machine, I would happily give it to them for free for the cost of them coming to get it or me sending it to them. Um, yeah, otherwise I'm afraid it's going to get stripped down. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.